Welcome back folks, this week we've got this, the 2020 KTM 1290 Super Duke R. apologize right now I deleted a whole load of original files when I picked the bike up from KTM so the bikes bogging I've been riding it for the last day or so and then I realized I deleted all the uh, beauty shots sorry about that back on with the review right folks so I've gone out again today to do the first ride review of the 2020 KTM 1290 Super Duke R I have done so far probably a couple of hundred miles riding this back from um, up north had a few errands to do yesterday but it was all in the peeing rain so there was nothing really for you to say but I'll tell you right now I love this bike this thing is nuts here's why nationals but traffic ahead stand by stand by into the twisties oh white truck TMF, what you doing to me? The curse of TMF. <laughs> oh, that's why. That hello. <laughs> this thing is mental. Seriously, this when you're like 18, 20 years of age, and you have that mate that turns up anywhere you go and you are guaranteed a fantastic time but you never quite know what they're gonna do that's this bike it's brilliant i love it i feel like a teenager again but i tell you what but i tell you what even though this thing is a hooligan it has impeccable manners impeccable the handling is just amazing the brakes, the brakes, the Brembo brakes, and as you'd expect, they live up. You've got Brembo master cylinder, I believe, Brembo calipers. It is just beautiful. When you need them, you squeeze that lever, they're reassuringly firm, and it's like the thing just, it just goes, that's all right, I've got you, it's okay, calm down. It's beautiful, it doesn't snatch, there's no jerkiness to it. The chassis, look at these bumpy back roads. Chassis just soaks it up. Suspension is the WP, uh, I think it's semi active, I think. I'll put it up on the screen now. But it is just a beautiful ride. I've got the Cali Moto app plotting me a bit of a random ride here. I know where the destination, I know where that is, where I want to go. But I just set it to um, the semi twisty route, the one, the second one down from the most twisty option. Because I find that fight that'll put you down really backcountry twisty lanes. Like they'll make this look like the M1. A little bit like this one. <laughs> but you know what? I don't care. I don't care. This bike, I have not had this feeling from a bike in a long time. Have I gone the wrong way? I think I have. Do a quick UE. 
Now turning circle's not great, that's fully locked, but it'll go around, you know, see the width of this, this is like a single carriageway backcountry lane, and it will go right round that with full lock. So if I had a pair, I probably could have done that without putting my foot down. But you know, I'm not at school anymore. Why make things hard for yourself? Where was I? Yes, this bike. I'm all about the feels. As you know, folks, I am all about the feels. And this thing... To be blunt, this is the best Viagra you are ever going to get between your legs. It is phenomenal. Now I've ridden the 2019 Super Adventure and I've ridden the 2019 GT but this thing, this engine, it's the new LCA engine, it's lighter I think it's got even, well it does, it has, I think it's got another 6 brake on it this thing's got 180 brake horsepower 180, 180 and it's got 140 newton meters of torque. It is insane. Now I'm trying to be a good boy here, I'm trying to set at the speed limit, but I am hardly touching this throttle. Hardly touching it. I was on some closed road yesterday, up near Silverstone, and this thing at 135 mile an hour in six gear, was chugging along you know you, you've got the throttle open but you could twist it and it still takes off it is just ridiculous and i love it is there any place for a motorcycle like this on british roads oh good god i'm glad to say yes oh i mean listen to that blipper can you tell i like it yet oh <laughs> <laughs> Woo -hoo! Stand by. Right, so it's looking like the 360's on. Straight into a 40. <laughs> Well, in that case, we'll stay at 40. Well, this is a good chance to show you. I mean, this 40 miles an hour, I'm in third gear, three and a half thousand revs. It'll just trundle along, no problem at all. Absolutely no issue. It's perfectly happy, there's no snatchiness on the throttle. I was saying yesterday, actually, even in um, sort of traffic on the roundabouts and things where I was yesterday, even in first and second gear, it felt placid is probably a good word. It definitely lets you know there is an utter, utter animal underneath, but um, do you know, it can put on its its best, its number ones, and it can behave when it needs to, and it's got to meet the ambo, P's and Q's it'll do all that, 30 miles an hour, third gear 2,500 revs trundling along what's it like in second Second, it's slightly snatchier. I mean, it's definitely a third gear. Trundle along in 30 is going to be a third gear. Second, I mean, watch what happens when I just touch, literally touch the throttle. <laughs> I mean, the front will come up. <laughs> oh my God, I love this bike. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm trundling along and yet it makes me feel like that. Oh my God, I think I've bought a bike. Nope, no. Put your sensible head on, smart. Where's those nationals? Come on. Nationals, here, yeah, national nationals. It's a 50, I'll take a 50. Shall we wheel it? Yeah. <laughs> right, up to 50. I mean, you hear that blipper? How silky smooth is that blipper? And the line this thing holds is gorgeous. You just put its nose where you want it to go and it holds the line. I said when I was doing some filming yesterday that the bike, when, you, when you're off the bike and you're moving it, it feels really short and stubby. I mean, I'm comparing it to my usual tractor, but it, it feels a tiny thing. And yet when you get on it, it's probably the width of the tank here, but the bike feels really quite muscular and sculpted and substantial. 
you know, it, it feels like a toy when you're off it, but when you get on it, it's like you've, you've just strapped a seat to a rhino and someone is towel flicking its nuts. Look, look, nationals! Gotta be careful because even that little bit of acceleration will have you at stupid speed. So there we go, that's our slot. 60 miles an hour, fourth gear, trundling along. It wants to go, you can feel it wants to go, but it's still well mannered. Man, I love this thing. What's the best way to sum this up? A rider experience. But then a Harley is a rider experience, but you couldn't get any more different between this and any of the Harleys I've tried. In fact, the only thing I've ridden that comes close to this was the 2014 V4R Aprilia Tuono I had. That bike was an utter weapon under throttle, but it was a pig at slow speeds and through the town. The reliability was junk. The fueling was junk, but this, wow. I need to get my hands on the new Tuono now. Aprilia or anyone, any dealerships, if you're watching, if you have the 2020 Aprilia Tuono factory, preferably, if you could get in touch, info at teapot one or leave a comment anywhere, I would love to take one out to do a review on it because I may, I may have found a toy. Oh man, this I need that. I need something like this in my life, you know. I love the GS. You might have guessed that. I absolutely love the GS. It just lacks that. I'm sorry to be crude again, but it lacks that bollock tingling factor. You know the. Ooh, it lacks that. Oh wow. I don't want to be crude, but it's a little bit uncomfortable sitting on the seat at the moment because of what this bike's doing. <laughs> Sometimes I think I share too much with you folks. Sorry if that's put you off your breakfast, but if it hasn't, you're my kind of person. Speaking of utter freaks, if you're on Instagram, head along to a chap called R1 Soul. Pete is an utter deviant, but he's the nicest bloke you're gonna meet. He really is salt of the earth. Well worth a follow. He put a smile on my face every single day through um, lockdown breath of fresh air the book so check him out right blown enough smoke up his ass next god this is the longest red light ever stop wasting my life <laughs> nationals Not though. it's just effortless normal road riding speeds anything at all is absolutely effortless i think this thing for normal road riding will give any sports bike a run for its money. I really think you're only going to see any sort of difference at triple figures. Ridiculous triple figure speeds. It's just mental. Oh man. I, I wish you could feel how smooth that blipper is and how razor sharp this makes your lines feel. I think it's because you're, you're sort of thrown a little bit over the front. Look, I'm still, there you go, 60 mile an hour. But it makes you feel amazing. Oh, hang on, 360 camera's gone blue. What does that mean? All right, let me pull over somewhere. Off this bike look at it it's just mean and angry oh it's gone i just want to check on the app to see why is it not connecting connect this bloody thing i updated this last night in case that was an issue don't tell me it never picked up any of that what's going on no 360 video exists <sighs> let me see what i can do we've got to get some 360 video can't be riding around like a knobhead and not actually get any footage no that's not working at all. I wonder if it's a shaking about that does it. It's got an SD card on it. It's top of the range SD card. Genuine one from SanDisk. But this is just frozen. Let's try switching it off and switching it back on again. Ning. So we'll try connecting again. Ooh. Nope. Look. Nothing. Failed to read file. What is going on there? Right. Let's try. 
reformatting again. Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, how is everything? Everything's good. Stop. How's this? There we go. Technology, when it works, awesome. When it doesn't, pain in the arse. Oh, that's so annoying. The screen keeps going blank. I wish Knox, Knox Armour, if you're watching this, can you make these handroids with the fingertip in there that will allow you to work a smartphone? That would be awesome, because it's really annoying not being able to work my phone. Like if the screen goes black when I'm riding, I have to stop. I have to stop, find somewhere, well, find somewhere safe, stop, take the glove off, put the screen back on again, put the glove back on. Oh, it's tough, it's tough. Right, right and over. That's a good road to the left there. Goudhurst, A262, it's a great road. I know he's indicating right, but let's just let him come, or her, let them commit. Which they have. Bambahurst, B2162. Now that's a bumpy bit of road, that, and at no point did this make me think. Mirrors, brakes, down to 30. Yeah, at no point did this make me think that it was going to protest or chuck me out the saddle or anything like that. Oh no, it's not that left. Oh, that's... Yeah. Sorry, the sat-nav was telling me to do a left, but it's one of those occasions when the, the road actually goes round to the left. It's just a sharp bend. Let me get through here, back onto the open road, and I'll tell you more about the 2020 KTM 1290 Super Duke Ah, oh, I loves it! I loves it! He does! Board, board. It's the world's largest little village. Ah, 50! Oh. Oh my god, I love this thing. Listen to that can, that is the standard exhaust. Seriously, you'd not be upset if you could never change that. That, that is perfectly okay. It's gonna sound a lot better with like a full on Austin Racing or a crop of H or something like that. Yeah, of course. But as a standard can, not only does it look okay, but it sounds. Beautiful. It's got enough growl, so you as the rider are getting that feedback and that sort of visceral blood pump to your soul when you hit the throttle. Nationals! <laughs> oh my god! Ah, why am I filming? I can have so much fun. Obviously, I'm a good boy all the time. Obviously. Speed limits are there for a reason, people. You must adhere to them. <clears throat> Speaking of which, some of the footage that might not have come out yesterday, I had a quick look. I was up to like half past two this morning trying to get the Paint Nation podcast all done, ready for tomorrow. So I had a quick look at the footage I did yesterday. Part of what I did yesterday is I had to go and see Northamptonshire Old Bill mixing with my old brothers and sisters. It was going to be a little secret, but I think uh, the chaps have already tweeted it. I am going to be doing some work with uh, Northamptonshire Old Bill and their bike safe department to try and promote a little bit of bike safe, which is all a little bit ironic, isn't it? But anyway, so there's some awesome, oh, I should have gone down there. There are some awesome things coming very soon. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so that's a full lock. It's not going to make it right. Okay, so I lied before when I said it would do a full lock turn. Oh, hang on. Is that a one way? Can I go down now? Yeah, there you can. That's weird, isn't it? Hmm, the road made it look like it was a one way. There was no, no entry or anything. But there's a national speed limit sign facing you. So you must be allowed down here. 
Bartley Mill Road. Right, I need to tell you some specs about this thing, don't I? So as I said before, it's 180 brake horsepower. Yes, 180. 140 newton meters of torque. It has a 16 litre tank. I did reset the trip yesterday, but it wasn't a full tank when I picked it up. But I reckon I had somewhere in the region of about 100 and I think about 120, 130 miles before I filled her up. And bear in mind, yesterday was my first ride on it, so I was getting very excited with the throttle. I filled up again, and I didn't reset the trip. Yes, I'm an umpty. This is my professional job, you know. Anyway, I'll make sure I do that for the more in-depth vid. Speaking of which, this is going to be the first ride review vid, obviously, and I will be doing quite a few others I'd imagine on this. Seat height, I'll put that up on the screen now. Nationals! That means you can accelerate madam, come on. Oh, it just carves its way along the road. This dash is lovely really bright contrasting colours really catches your eye beautifully when you go into somewhere dark it switches from that white background to a red background everything is really easy to to view i will do a vid on the tft dash and everything that it does like i did with the old one and this will work seamlessly with the ktm ride app as well so you get turn by turn navigation as well as a host of other like comms utility utility option what's a comms utility option uh what else can i tell you about this bike seat in position beautiful it's definitely a, a sporty riding position you know you are sort of thrown over the front wheel which i really like to be honest i really like it gives you fantastic feedback from the front and up through the bars the pegs are high but not ridiculously high you know i can ride with the sort of balls of my feet on the pegs at the moment and my knees aren't up around my ears which is great obviously if you want to chuck the leathers on and start dragging knees then whacking your your toes up onto the pegs and hooking your knees into this beautifully sculpted wide tank is a piece of pee i specifically didn't put my leathers on today because this thing just wills you into being a total hooligan. And my will to be a total hooligan far outweighs my skill level nationals to actually be a total hooligan. The power on this is just absolutely effortless. I hardly touch the throttle there and yet it allows a nice big overtake like that with total ease. Now when you get the revs up, sort of certainly over 6,000 revs, then there's a real degree of urgency. The engine changes, the throttle becomes much more precise and razor sharp, almost snatchy. If you're not fully committed, then you will get a bit of a snatchy ride because the power coming through at higher revs is awesome. I think it makes maximum BHP and maximum torque at around the 8,000, 9,000 rev mark. So generally, to be honest, you're probably not even going to touch most of the power band of this bike. Phenomenal. It really is sublime. I'm gonna be like one of those mums. You see, you know, you see those mums pushing the push chairs in town in traffic, and they'll get to a part where they need to cross the road, and all you'll see as you're driving down the road is this push chair emerges between some cars because the mum pushes the car out first. That's what I'm like with this thing. Got to keep that in mind. Hold back, hold, hold. Now, I don't know if it's because there's a fat lad riding it or because there's a fat lad with a 
massive stick sticking out the front of the bike or if it's just a bike or a combination of all of the above but this bike gets looks I think KTM and Ducati are the two best looking bikes out there they've just nailed styling and looks I mean a KTM bike looks like it's the sort of bike you don't want your kids to hang around you know it's that kid it's the one that's going to be sniffing glue now can't cane it along here because you get lots of cyclists and horse riders and all that jazz wow it's much more overgrown than I remember this Whoop, get round there well that is lovely you can just lean no problem at all that's weird I was almost expecting like I braked right in the mid corner there no protest is it protestation is that a word it was easy there was no drama from the bike at all Ooh, what's going on here oh dogging <clears throat> It's just such an awesome experience. I just want to ride. I don't care where I go. I just want to ride. Seat-wise, comfort-wise, it looks a very thin, almost like a race sort of seat, you know? It just looks like a thin bit of foam. But it's actually pretty comfortable. I did a good three or four hours on it yesterday. In fact, maybe even five hours by the time I got home. And I felt fine. I will mention it. It is no GS. You know, in terms of comfort, it's no GS. Of course it's not. But it's certainly not like sitting on a, an iron bar or a razor blade. It's not bad at all. No, I'd be perfectly happy to do some trips on this. All right, I'm just going to stop and stop the 360 and restart it just in case. I don't want to corrupt. I don't want to have just one file. More chance of, of it corrupting and losing all the footage. Have a quick look. <clears throat> Same saving. What is going on with this camera? Why does it keep corrupting? I wonder if it is because it is flying about so much. All right, let's try again. We're only about 10 minutes away of that. That's gonna be so annoying if that 360 footage is knackered. But then I jump back on this bike and I really don't care. Woohoo! Where am I going? Am I going down here? Yes. Quick shifter. Oh man, this is awesome. I've got no idea what I've told you about this bike. I really don't, but it's just, I mean, just don't care. Just get on one and ride it. You may as well just hand them your credit card. KTM, you have nailed it, nailed it. For a road bike, oh. For the grin factor alone, just, you need one of these in your garage. I'd imagine the only thing that can beat this is the sound of that Tuono. If the Tuono handles like this and makes you feel like this, but has that added Tuono engine, the sound, then I'm plainly a lot of money out of pocket because I'll have to buy one. Sorry, Mrs. Teapot, but um, I think, I think, it's going to be Tuono or KTM next in the garage. But it would have to be a second bike. Oh dear. January time, I think it is. I'm coming up for the end of finance on Helga. And I love Helga, but she's a 1200. And obviously there's now 1250 available. So you can't keep the 1200. You just can't. So um, I'm pretty damn sure that I'll replace Helga with a new 1250 GS. Not the GSA, the GS. But if I could afford a second, this is just streaking by everything else and this has a place in my garage love it I don't know where this road goes and I don't like these little side options never quite sure what's coming out oh Jesus that turn of speed for the overtake is just beautiful right come on smart put a balanced head on I'm sorry folks, I've got well, well caught up in this. <laughs> well, I tell you how it is, don't I? 
I tell you how the bike makes you feel. Just wow. What else can I tell you technically about this bike? Uh, price is up on the screen. So in this model you have cruise control, uh, you've got a whole host of engine modes, the standard ones, rain, road, uh, I think there's wet, there's track, and then there's another one above that. So you can have full customization of this as to what level of anti-wheelie you have, what level of traction control you have. It's got lean sensitive ABS and traction control. You can switch all of that off if you want to. You know, if you've got a death wish, you can do that. Heated grips are an option. Heated seat is an option, as well as a whole host of uh, power parts through the KTM range or aftermarket goodies. Now I know the power of this thing will get you into all sorts of trouble, but it will also get you out of all sorts of trouble. Where any overtake is on, within reason, it is just a fantastic motorcycle. Let's go and have a look at her, shall we? So, what do I think of it? What do you think? Um, folks, this bike is incredible. I know it's the first ride review. I've literally done a couple of hundred miles, maybe 300 miles now on this, but it is sensational. It really is. I've heard that people have said previous carnations, the front has been quite light. And yeah, when you are caning it in this, the front does feel light, but you're doing well over road legal speeds when that's happening. The power in this, from the bottom of the rev range all the way through, it is a joy that in this day and age, a bike like this exists. It's put a smile on my face that I haven't had for a long time. And that's not to say I'm a grumpy bugger because I don't think I am. But this bike has made me feel young again. It's made me want to get out and ride more than I ever have before. And I am absolutely in love with it. It is awesome <laughs> that's about as much of a balanced review as i can give you folks it is sensational out of everything i've tried so far this this is my hooligan this is my toy so far it's not the all-round package which the gs gives me sorry to bring the gs up i know how much you like that but for everything other than strapping a suitcase onto the back and riding down to the Picos to go and have some fun in the mountains and maybe do a little bit of off-roading, a little bit of off-roading, then this would be the bike I would take for everything else. I would tour on this happily. I would do long rides on it, commute on the motorway. I'd commute in and out of town on it. Do absolutely anything on this. It is awesome. Get yourselves out there, get along to your local KTM dealership and take one of these out but leave your credit card at home because it is going to take a spanking. Right, folks, if you've enjoyed the vid, make sure you give it a thumbs up or if you haven't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know either way in the comments down below. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and ding dong the little bell next to it. That alerts you every time a vid is uploaded, which at this point in time is every Monday and Friday. To all you patrons out there, I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for all your support. We're going to be having a clan ride out and meet up as soon as we possibly can. I cannot wait to see everybody. If you haven't checked out Patreon yet, head to patreon.com forward slash teapot one and join the fun. Right then, folks, that'll do us for this week. Keep on keeping on. Keep doing your thing. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!